So, um, I just watched The Revenant, and at first I'm going to give an introduction of what I think about the movie overall, and then I'm going to go into detail, so I'm going to say, hey, spoiler alert, so you can just go watch the movie and come back, or just unclick the video, or, or if you don't care, then just continue watching. Overall opinion. Well, historically and... It was well depicted. The drama, you can feel the drama. It's really intense in emotions and in tension all the time. The plot is a really good, good plot. I think it, the writers did a good job with that. Um, I think it, it said that it was based on a novel. It was based on a real story. I don't know. And um, the acting was perfect, excellent. I mean, <laughs> you could truly feel everything the characters were feeling in every single moment. The dialogue was really good as well. Everything was really good, I mean, even though there was like scenes with no cuts, they are they are called single motion picture? I'm not sure. Like in Mad Max, you know, they just go on with it with a single scene with no cuts and you can really appreciate the acting and the effort of all the team and everybody synchronized doing one shot on scene and it was really good so I'm giving it a score and I must say it, it, it's really close to a 10 out of 10 it's really close it was amazing I mean I, I, I cannot find any failures yet um, only one yeah only one little detail yeah it's close to a 10 though nine point something not sure yet but it is a really good movie if you like drama if you like history if you like survival if you like <sighs> good acting you're gonna enjoy the movie and uh, it's not boring at all like you're never gonna get bored maybe if you're one of those ADHD kids that are, uh, are used to a lot of action all the time maybe you'll get bored but for the rest of the people I think you're gonna enjoy the movie now, spoilers ahead. Please stop the video and watch the movie if you can in the cinema to support the release or buy the DVD or something because they deserve the money because they put a lot of work behind that. And um, if not, if you don't care about spoilers, then just continue watching. And uh, I'm going to go ahead into details of the story. Okay, basically, um, the main protagonist is Leonardo DiCaprio. Glass and uh, well, Mr. Glass. He is basically one of these colonists that went to 19th century to conquer the west of the U.S. Now, the, what now we know as the U.S. The Northwest, most of it, you know, north, close to the Pacific. I'm not really sure where, but uh, it's really it was like the edge of the world back then, as one of the characters said. He got married and had a son with a indigenous girl from an indigenous tribe. I remember the name of the, the tribe was like Pukawi or something like that. And um, he had a son, he was happy and everything. But suddenly, some assholes came along the way and killed everyone. So he, when he came back, they had already killed his wife and there were uh, one colonel or something like that was about to kill his son, so he killed him. That's why he ran away with his son to sell pellets. Fur, sorry. To sell fur. Hunt like uh, deer and mooses and uh, any animals. They can buy to get fur and sell it. Because back then furs were, were expensive. And uh, it was worth the effort. Now, there's another character played by Tom Hardy. He's the antagonist. His name is Fitzgerald, and he's basically the asshole of the movie. And this other, there are two other side, side characters, but they play a big role in the story. That are the, the commander or captain, the captain, the red-headed one. 
And this kid that was in the Millers that always with the eyebrows, you know, <laughs> he's a really funny guy. I, I, I mean, it's hard to believe he can play a drama, but he can almost pull it off, pull, pull it off. And um, there's some um, kind of hate from Fitzgerald, the character he's playing, uh, towards anything that is not, I mean, towards the indigenous people, any kind of tribe or whatever, because he got stolen and they cut his hair off, like his, what in Spanish we call cabellera. That's basically the, from the skin to the skull, they just cut off and all the hair with it. So there was no hair there, like he couldn't grow that part of the, of the hair back. And he had a lot of hatred inside towards his people. That's why you can see at the beginning of the movie, this um, sort of um, cultural conflict between the characters and the hate. And Fitzgerald is not afraid to express his hate. And he hates the kid and he hates everything that has to do with, with them and their decisions. So basically he's a hater. Because of past experiences, now he holds a grudge. And uh, yeah. Stereotyping, schemas, whatever. They basically work for this company, I suppose, to get fur and, and sell it, but they get attacked by another tribe. I don't remember, Reeves, something like that. And um, they were like 40 men, and most of them died, like 34 or something died. Uh, and they were only like, well, they're a little bit more than 40 men. And there were like 9, 10 left after the attack. And uh, when I f they, they first spoke about me this movie, they told me that it was just about a bear attack. And I was like expecting a bear attack survival or whatever. And that he was left for dead. But no, the movie is way more complicated than that. The plot is really good. So they, they, their plan is to hide the fur and then come back with an army to secure it. And secure the money. But in the meantime, Glass ventures off alone into the woods and he finds two cubs. And of course, it's really weird to see two cubs alone in the wild. Mama has to be nearby. But before he could do anything, when he was turning around, this bear, the mama, furious, attacks him. He throws the gun away and uh, just simply tears him apart a little bit. He plays dead, of course. Or tries to a little bit, at least. When he stops being a threat to the mama bear, um, she just goes back to her cubs and mind her own business. But Glass was stupid enough to grab his gun, point at the bear, and shoot her. That was asking for it. I mean, he didn't kill the bear at the moment, so he got nearly killed. And more like his throat got cold, all his back destroyed, chest, everything. He, the arm broken, the leg broken. Wow, it was a disaster. I don't know. I don't know. It's a miracle that he survived. <laughs> like, he survived so many times. I know. I'm about to call him a giver or something because, oh my god. Oh my god. Well, he manages to kill the bear with a knife. <laughs> and the bear like falls on top of him and if you know anything about bears they weigh a lot like more than 500 kilos or so and uh, imagine 500 kilos on your chest you can't breathe but luckily they get really quickly um, towards him they get the bear out they sew the some stitches in the in the wounds and they carry carry him towards the destination but they find a lot of complications until one moment, um, well, before that, if you ever get attacked by a bear, uh, and this is the f perfect example because he was, the bear, the female bear, bear, sorry, was just protecting the cubs. He saw Glass as a threat, so that's the only reason she attacked. She was not looking for food. She was not hungry. She just saw him as a threat. So if you ever encounter two cubs, bear cubs, and you know mama's around, just play dead right away. And if she attacks you, before you can play dead or whatever, still play dead and pray. That's all you can do. If you have bear spray, of course, you can use it. I know they have like 100 million receptors in their nose. So they are really sensitive 
towards smell. If you have perfume or something really smelly, you can um, scare them away with that. Um, like if you have so, so you have an idea, like a hound, you can have around five five million and ten million receptors in their nose. So that's how much they can smell. They can smell you thirty kilometers away. But if the wind is on the other side, they cannot smell you. It, get caught by surprise. I think that's what, what happened. And so they were they uh, um the ten men are carrying nine men are carrying him to to go to the destination to the headquarters and but it's really complicated. I mean if you know if you know in rocky uh geography ge geographical place it's really complicated to transport somebody. Like nowadays we use choppers, helicopters, so imagine so at one point, they were about to kill him and his misery. He just go move on, but the captain didn't have the what it, what it took. So he said, "A hundred dollars to anyone." And back then, a dollar was worth a buck. A buck is a deer. So a hundred deers, or even three hundred deers, are it's a lot of money. You can buy a lot of stuff with that. And um, to anyone that stayed with him until he was okay. Or if he died, to give him a proper proper burial, and uh, move on. So this kid, the kid with the eyebrows from the Millers, he says he will stay with him, and um, for free. Also, his son, obviously Hawk, was gonna stay with him, and this asshole, Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald was just wanted the money, but he really became an inconvenience because his plan was really to kill him when nobody was seeing uh, and uh, say oops he died let's just move on get our money anyways and uh, I mean, what, what, he had nothing to lose but the thing is Hawk saw him trying to murder him and so he killed Hawk stabbing him to death and of course <laughs> Glass saw all this but he was speechless. I mean, he couldn't speak at the moment because his throat was a little bit injured. And um, they just... So Fajero was working on a lie to get out of there. And he convinced the kid to run away because some feathers, indigenous tribe, were behind them and were going to kill them. So just run away. So just bury him a little bit or just kill him or whatever and just run away. So they, they run away. Eventually, the kid found out that it was a lie, and kind of put a gun at the at Fitzgerald. But his gun was—I mean, he didn't have the guts or the, the speed. And Fitzgerald kind of, um, for I mean, uh, didn't take his life, but because he knew the the kid was a pussy, he was not a man, and uh, just kept on with the lie and got the money, three hundred dollars just for him. And here's one of the things that uh, that bugs me. When um, they're on the table getting the money, um, the general takes his part, right? But the kid, he doesn't want any any part of the money because he doesn't feel that is that he earned it. And then the next next scene, they cut the scene, but the money is gone. So there are only two possibilities: or either the general took the kid's money, or it's a mistake of the movie. I'm just gonna leave it out there. That's the only thing that that bugs me. The rest is pretty accurate. Like you learn from Cinema Sense how to detect, you know, all these kind of little things, and it's nice. It's nice. Um, in the meantime, this guy Glass, the guy who got attacked by the bear, he survived, and it, it's really hard to survive by your own on, on, on the woods without a gun to hunt. Just, just like a knife and stuff to make fire, which was really helpful. Without it, he wouldn't be able to survive. But some people nowadays, they get lost in the woods, and they, after three days, they die. And this guy, with a broken leg, a broken hand, wounds all over his body, a burning fever, he managed to survive, eating whatever he could eat, drinking whenever he could drink, and just like wow doing what he could it was pretty amazing it's, it's a pretty like um 
overhuman. It's an overhuman achievement. It was incredible. People back then were badasses. And it's not only that. The another another tribe. This tribe is not like the the tribe he, he used to live in and got married and everything. This tribe, whenever they see a white man, they kill it, unless they're French. They can make businesses business to buy horses, but in general they hate the white man. Of course, it makes sense. And um, so he was running away from them. They wanted to kill him as well, just because. And um, somehow <laughs> he got lucky and everybody got to think he was dead. After he, oh, this indigenous guy that was from, from the same tribe as, as him helped him out, but the French killed him. Pretty sad. Pretty racist. Pretty. And it's real. I mean, it's something that happened. A lot of indigenous people got killed. And this movie talks about, like, they. It criticizes how the white man was unfair getting the land, getting the resources, and also killing and raping all the time. So it's like, not cool. Anyways. Well, I could, I could go into details, but I'm going to sum up because it's getting too long, the video. He manages to come back to to the headquarters. And of course, Fitzgerald's... Fitzgerald runs away with all the money and also some more money that he stole from the safe. And um, so Glass and the captain say, let's hunt this motherfucker down. So they go on to hunt him. At, the, at one point they were really close, like they, they could see the smell of fire, the smoke from the fire that um, Fitzgerald had made. And they say, okay, you go to the west, I go to the east and just, just meet up if you don't find him or something happens, just meet up back here. The captain was the first one to find him, or if I, I should say, Fitzgerald was the first one to find the captain. And um, he said, yeah, you're, you're arrested, you come back to me, but Fitzgerald, of course, has, has another plan. And he was pointing the gun at the captain, but the captain was not fast enough to shoot him. He tried, he was really close, I mean, he got to shoot his gun, but he missed. Um... I got killed, and also the motherfucker Fitzgerald. He got his his hair cutting, you know, from the skull and everything. Like if it was uh, something made by the the indigenous people, and uh, the red skins, if you can call it. That's racist, but um, that's how they were known, or the feathers back then. Um, the um, glass finds him, and uh, he was really clever. Actually, he does something really. really I would have not, would have not thought about something so clever. What he does is gets a a branch of a tree, and makes the captain, the, the dead, <laughs> the dead body, the captain, the corpse, stand on the horse and sit like if it was alive, and cover his head a little bit. And he pretended to be the one dead, being carried on the other horse. So when uh, Fitzgerald saw this, he shot what he thought was glass, but he actually shot the the corpse of the captain. And it was a clever trap, and of course, glass got a, sh a chance to shoot him. He shot him in the shoulder, and then he ran after him. Somehow, the other dude managed to hide, and... Uh, they got to shoot all their shots, but they all missed. And this fight was so fucking awesome. It was so fucking tense, the fight. You could see one, that one guy with a knife, the other with an axe. Oh, man, fingers flew, blood, stabbing, choking, everything. And there, there you can learn the philosophy that Glass learned from the, the mate from the tribe. That only God can judge us and vengeance... Will not bring his son back. But luckily, well, um, speaking about the devil, this other tribe, the, the, the dangerous one, the, the violent one, was happened to just pass through there. So, yeah, uh, both are wounded, but Fitzgerald is badly wounded. He's about to get killed by Glass, but Glass holds. 
back and just pushes him to the river to the hands of this other tribe. This other tribe do something really painful to him, you don't get to see it, but and then they drown him. And uh, as they pass, you can see the, the, the daughter of the other tribe, the, the chief of the tribe was looking all the time for her, um, sees him and it turns out that Glass helped her out. She was getting raped and he kind of helped her uh, escape that rape situation. She got to cut the dude's balls that was raping her, so it was a happy ending for all. And uh, after that, he just you just see like like his hallucinations of his wife and how he kind of gets back up and walking up a mountain. But it's an open ended movie. You don't get to see the end end. Just maybe he survived. Maybe he moved on with life. Maybe he found another woman and married. We don't know. The thing, the moral of the story is: what goes around comes around. You crop what you sow. Um, he helped out some people, and these people later on helped him out. And this asshole Fitzgerald, he was an asshole all the time, so he got he deserved. He got killed in a really painful way, lost fingers in the way, and everything. Um, it makes you think all this stuff from someone out now with the bombings in Paris and Syria and everything. What goes around comes around. I mean, <laughs> if you kill people, you're going to create hatred and grudges and that's going to come back to you someday. There's a saying that men create their own demons and I think it's true. Your past will always follow you and make you pay for it. At least 99% of the time. It was a really good movie. It was really tense. Like, if they don't give DiCaprio an Oscar for this, he's not, never going to get it because he ate a fucking liver. But a raw liver, a, a real one, it was fucking disgusting. He like puked and everything. It was It was real that the director made him eat it. He also ate a lot of other disgusting stuff. He slept naked inside a horse. I don't know if it, if it, it was a real horse. It looked like a real horse. I mean, all the scene looked pretty much real. Well, a little bit of CGI on the part of the, the corpse of the horse might be, but there was also practical effects in the blood and everything, so... It was a really good movie. Um, I gave it a nine point. Let's say five or seven out of ten. You should totally watch it. Well, I just spoiled everything. So, <laughs> if you have any thoughts on the moral, the story, the philosophy behind it, oh, there, there's a quote from Fitzgerald: how his dad, his father, found God. His father were hunting, and um, he lost his friends. And he was starving to death. And he found this little place in the middle of nowhere with trees and everything. And he found God. And God was a squirrel. A pretty meaty one. So he killed the squirrel and ate it. Ate it. So that for him was God like salvation. And um, I don't know if it was ironic or not. But it makes you think. Like, I'm agnostic. I don't really know, I cannot prove anything, but you can see how people viewed God back then, like already in the 19th century, you know, Nietzsche and God is dead and everything it makes you think about it, like the moral, the world, that the world was a really scary and dark place full of death and misery. So yeah, you got that going on, that philosophy stuff. The shots were beautiful, the nature. The music was good. Well, there's not a lot of music. It's really just a tune. But it was good. It was intense. And um, you get to appreciate all the conformity, like, no, I'm sorry, the accommodations. Like, you got water all the time you wanted, heat, baths, everything. You take food, good food, not raw food. You take it for granted. And, um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about the movie. Great acting. I saw the how he got the Golden Globe for that movie. And uh, that Tom Hardy would never do something like that, <laughs> luckily. And uh, I think DiCaprio deserves the Oscar already. I mean, he deserved it in Django. 
he deserved it in the, the Wolf of Wall Street, but now he, you don't give him the Oscar now. You're assholes. Academy, I mean, come on, come on. He ate a fucking liver, man. What else? Have you ate a fucking liver? How many actors that got an Oscar ate a raw liver? Think about it. Think about it. It's good. So, um, goodbye. Um, whatever you think about the movie, leave it on the comments. And, um, ta-ta.